Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas, and thanks for joining us on your holiday. I'm Sophie Erber. Many Siouxlanders are racing around town today, still at this hour, finishing up some last-minute Christmas shopping. KCAU 9 News reporter Mallory Smith telling us what consumers are dealing with in our top story at 5. Sophie, today Lakeport Commons Shopping Center was just one of the places seeing an influx of customers today. I caught up with some of them on a mission to find the perfect gift. It's Christmas Eve and stores are filled with last minute holiday shoppers. Most people we spoke with were struggling to find gifts because of the recent shipping delays. Others found it hard to make time to shop because of their work schedules. With my line of profession, um, it's hard to get off on uh, normal hours and um, try to get it in before the end of the season. Uh, as you'd say, hectic, which is pretty normal for today then. The blizzard on Wednesday also contributed to today's large crowds. You know, I think the weather's still kind of freaking some people out, so it's been a little slow, slower than usual this year, but we are seeing a few people probably, you know, they come in, it's, it's been pretty steady today, just at least one person in the store at all times. And some stores limited capacity because of the coronavirus. According to USA Today, the most desired Christmas gift this year was a Disney Plus subscription. Number two was a PS5. One shopper says despite the packed stores, he had an easy time finding gifts for his loved ones. Very well, actually, better than in past years. I went right to everything I needed and it in and out and done. Christy Pittman, the owner of the boutique a la mode, says she's encountered quite a few last minute shoppers today as well. We are seeing a lot of gentlemen doing the last minute shopping. Last minute Santas are on the run today. And if you are still out looking for gifts, last minute deals are also on display. Store owners say sometimes hours before Christmas is a good time to score a sale. And if you still need to get those last minute gifts, Amazon Prime is still doing one day shipping. You might just be able to make it in time. All right, thanks so much, Mallory. And for those families that needed a little extra help this Christmas getting gifts under the tree, they were able to lean on Siouxland nonprofits. The Community Action Agency of Siouxland helping supply more than 600 gifts for kids, as well as providing everyday necessities for their families. The Salvation Army was able to help supply more than 6,000 gifts for families, as well as providing food for those in need. Nonprofits say that this year's gifts lists paint the picture of how hard families have been impacted by this pandemic. People are asking for very practical things. They're not asking for the new Stratocaster. They're, they're asking for everyday household items. They're asking for clean. Some of our families have asked for cleaning products, diapers, wipes, those kinds of things. Coming up tonight at 6, Siouxland nonprofits share with us how it's been a team effort with one another to help those here in need in Siouxland. And the Siouxland Salvation Army projecting a shortfall in donations this year. Not good news. Core leaders say that they are roughly $35,000 behind their goal for the 2020 kettle season. That is a whole $10,000 behind the previous projections. A number of factors are contributing to the shortfall, including yesterday's severe weather. I think more people, you know, are shopping online or we have, uh, you know, social distancing. So maybe people don't feel comfortable going up to the kettle. But uh, there's other ways to give, and uh, we'll be looking to have other fundraisers throughout the year to make up that loss because um, we need those funds. They're crucial, again, to our being able to support those in need. Clark saying that people can still make a donation by going to the Salvation Army website, Facebook page, or even by sending an old-fashioned check. Four people tonight hospitalized after a Wednesday morning crash. It was just one of many traffic accidents we saw yesterday during the severe weather here in Siouxland. This one happened near the 2600 mile marker of Highway 18 just after 9 in the morning. Officials say 40-year-old Maria Urbina Rivera of Marathon, Iowa, lost control of her pickup due to ice on the road. She crossed into the other lane of traffic before overcorrecting and entering a ditch. Three children were riding in the pickup truck at the time, ages 8, 11, and 14. Authorities say the 11-year-old was ejected through the back window and ended up in the pickup truck's bed. All four were taken to a Spencer Area Hospital for treatment. It is time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley here for us. And Marcus, some people planning to hit the roads around the holidays. Uh, what can they expect? 
Well, it does look like most of the main roads and interstates are fine. They're dry and uh, travel on those roads seems to be perfectly normal, but it's those back roads and secondary roads that we're seeing s snow still uh, staying on those, so slippery road conditions when you get to those back roads. High temperatures today only reaching up into the upper single digits and lower teens, 11 degrees for our high temperature in Sioux City. So it's been cold all day long. Forecast lows tonight, they'll drop down into the negatives around negative one degrees tonight zero uh, in Wayne negative one in Sioux City I should say negative two in Cherokee and Storm Lake as well as Yankton it looks like tomorrow we're actually going to warm up above freezing so a warmer day ahead for Christmas and this weekend is shaping up to be decent as well details on that in the nine on nine Sophie all right, thanks, Marcus. Taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Recoveries today nearly tripling the new cases, so great news there. Health officials recording 39 tests coming back positive, but again, the good news, 90 cases have newly recovered. In Nebraska, Dakota County not releasing a report today on Christmas Eve, but in the last two weeks, health officials have recorded more than 150 cases there. And in South Dakota, Yankton County reporting 31 new cases. The positivity rate there stands at 23.5%. Turning now to politics, the House and the Senate will both interrupt their holiday breaks, returning to the Capitol next week to override President Trump's veto of the National Defense Spending Bill. KCAU 9 Washington correspondent Basil John reports. President Trump vetoed the National Defense Authorization Act, waiting until the deadline to do so. He's kind of playing chicken in a mean-spirited way with our soldiers and their families. Virginia Senator Mark Warner says the defense bill provides a pay raise for service members, improves cybersecurity, expands 5G, and more. You're going to have to come back uh, between Christmas and New Year's and, and override the veto. And it just feels like this is one more example of this guy going out as a sore loser. It's games, it's tactics. Virginia Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger says Congress will override this veto. When our country is yet again being attacked uh, in cyberspace by the Russians, the fact that the president would pay play games is is deeply, deeply disappointing. The bill had overwhelming support in both the House and Senate, and Republicans seem prepared to break with the president to enact the bill over his objections. This is the most important piece of legislation I feel like we pass here every year to provide for the common defense of our country. Missouri Republican Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler says she agrees with some of the president's concerns, including a desire to crack down on social media platforms, but says now is not the time. We do need to remove some of those liability protections for some of the social media platforms. Uh, that it fits in another uh, standalone legislation. It really doesn't fit in our national defense bill. Congress will return to the Capitol Monday to take action on the veto. In Washington, Basil John, KCAU 9 News. For the first time in seven months, spending by households across the country has fallen. The Commerce Department saying consumer spending fell nearly one half of one percent in the month of November. And with federal coronavirus aid expiring, household income in November falling just over one percent. That's the third drop in just four months' time. Many consider this year to be filled with historic firsts, but it's simply another dot on the list of things World War I II veteran has lived through. Learn what he says is his secret to a long life coming up. And we're going to have great weather for Christmas Day tomorrow, a slight weekend warm-up, and next week a potential snow system. Details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us on your holiday. An improvement in the weather department mm. from yesterday. Still <laughs> yeah, chilly, but at least we're not contending with blowing snow right. and sub-zero temperatures. Yeah, yesterday was a tricky day if you were outside, <laughs> especially driving, because even though it wasn't a lot of snow, I mean, right. you, you look outside and there's still some snow on the ground, but it really wasn't a lot as far as totals go. That wind was really whipping it around and creating uh, visibilities that... It was really hard to drive in. Today, though, we're not seeing that. Just plenty of sunshine throughout Siouxland today, but temperatures not reflecting those sunny skies. Only 11 degrees here in Sioux City today. Normally 30 is where we should fall. This morning, starting out right there at an even zero degrees. 11 is your normal low temperature. So we really weren't too off from 
too far off from that normal low temperature here this morning, but definitely a cold day all day long throughout Siouxland. The view from the KCA United studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company showing a quiet, cold evening throughout Siouxland. Snow still on the ground there, but again, the main roads not too bad. As far as snowfall received throughout much of Siouxland, you head into western Siouxland around Niobrara, around three to six inches there, west of I-29 around Sioux City, Vermilion, way more snow than what we had here yesterday. But again, things could change. It's still a few days off, so it's definitely something that we're going to keep our eye on as it gets closer. My eyes on those overnight temperatures that oh, yeah. look very chilly. Yeah, a great <laughs> night to stay inside for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, while Christmas is a time for many to spend with family, for some, that's just not possible. That's why we're now sharing greetings from Siouxlanders currently in the Army National Guard. Hi, I'm First Sergeant Luke Creer. Uh, first Sergeant for 2nd and 34th IBCT. My hometown is Remsen, Iowa. I want to do a quick shout out to my friends and family. Happy holidays and I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Sergeant Derek Collier stationed here at Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo. I want to wish my family back home in Sioux City, Iowa a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, this is Specialist Sean Lair out of Sioux City with the 1st of the 113th Cav. I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to my wife, Sarah, my two boys, Ryle and Grayson, and to my Dungeons & Dragons group. Merry Christmas. And from us here at KCAU 9, we'd like to say with all of Siouxland and thank our hometown heroes, sending them a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All of the Christmas greetings we share on our newscast can be rewatched if you like, and you can even share them from our website right now. The address there on your screen is SiouxlandProud.com. Well, after a family was struck with tragedy, their community now pulling together for a special kind of Christmas gift. We'll explain more coming up. And as the rest of the world waits to celebrate the arrival of 2021, one a World War II veteran is looking forward to celebrating his 105th birthday. Let's take a look back at his historic life next. Everyone here at KCAU wishes you and your family a safe and happy holiday season. Our news team will be off to enjoy the holiday, but we'll be on call for any breaking news. We hope you enjoy our special holiday programming for you, and please have a happy holiday. This is KCAU 9 News. Well, the new year is near, and for many, it's a time to move on and put the past in the past. Some especially looking forward to it this year, but for one World War II veteran, the turning of the calendar is the perfect time to look back on his historic life. Doug Meehan shares his story. How old are you in this photo? Four years. Four years old. Yeah. The image may be faded, but for Henry Narashevich, the memory is pretty sharp, and that's saying something, because Henry's about to celebrate a big birthday. I'll be 105. When? January 1st. The year was 1916 in Salem, New Hampshire. Henry the fourth of ten children born to Polish immigrant parents. Although given some questionable record keeping of the time, the long-standing family joke is whether Henry was born on the first or the third. But I asked an uncle of mine who was around at that time, you know, he says, which one is right? He says, I know it's January 1st. He said, I can swear to that. That's you right there. That's me. Henry and his two older brothers were sworn in to serve our country in World War II. I was assigned to this outfit in Chenevers in France. It was 76 years ago this week that Henry was in the Battle of the Bulge under the command of General George S. Patton. We had one of the best armored field artillery units that he's seen. So he sent us up there. That was two days before Christmas. During the course of that battle, the U.S. suffered as many as 75,000 casualties. Henry made it home. And during the course of his lifetime, he's seen two world wars, a depression, and now a global pandemic. In his wildest imagination, he never thought he'd still be here today. When I retired in 1980, I figured it'd probably go another 10 years or so. So I bought a new car, and I figured it's going to last me. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you lasted longer than the car. Humor has served Henry well in his soon-to-be 105 years. As far as a secret to living that long? I don't know. I don't know. I say moderate living, I say. Don't do anything to excess. Incredibly, Henry still drives the Buick he bought in 2007. He's got an active driver's license, and it's good for four more years, although he says when he's 109, he'll give that up. But you're not there yet, right, Henry? But he's getting close. Pretty incredible. Well, home renovations aren't the easiest projects to complete, but when one community learned about a family that had fallen on some tough times, giving them a place to call home became priority. That story next. 
Renovating a house is not an easy task, but one community is coming together to get the job done. And knowing they're giving a family a home for the holidays is all the motivation they said they needed. Maggie Smolka shows us why this project is extra important. The Porter children, Jackson, Dylan, Tristan, and London, are faced with the pain of loss. It's hard not to think of my mom and dad. <laughs> Four strong children unexpectedly forced to live a life without either of their parents. It was last October when their 39-year-old father died of a brain aneurysm. Then two months later, grief strikes again. At just 36, their mother passes away from a heart attack. In steps the power of social media and the power of a community. So we are surprising the family with a home today. <laughs> It needs some work. It needs a roof. It could use an addition for an extra bedroom. It needs some flooring. A transformation begins. After learning the family was living with their grandmother in a two-bedroom apartment, an army of people were determined to show this family they are not alone. To know that this is their home and that it will always be their home and nobody's going to take it from them. Let's now head back to the present. Hi, guys. <sighs> December 2020. Are you excited to see your new home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Porter family coming home for the holidays. And they gave these kids something that they haven't had, and that is a permanent home. And unfortunately, it's without mom and dad, but me and Uncle Philip and Aunt Manda and Uncle Martin will make sure that they, we try to fill some of the void. Taking a live look outside right now, Marcus returns with one more check on our forecast coming up next, so stay with us. Finally tonight, more than a thousand Jeeps lined up in Martinsburg, West Virginia this after, or yesterday afternoon actually, all for one special boy. Check it out. Jeep drivers gathering from across the country to honor Georgie. That is a young cancer patient. It started as a simple plea on Facebook due to Georgie's health. His family spent Christmas with him in the hospital last year, but since he is coming home for this holiday, people got to work to help give him some extra cheer. Some of the drivers even dressed up their rides, especially for Christmas, with lights and decorations that is pretty cool jeep people are usually pretty proud of yeah. their vehicle so i'm sure this didn't take too much coaxing but that mm -hmm. is a pretty cool movement and uh no. speaking of pretty cool temperatures yeah. overnight uh definitely a nice night to stay inside with the family yeah stay inside eat some warm food it is going to be extremely cold tonight temperatures dropping down to slightly below zero tonight wind chill values easily in the negative teens or maybe even a few negative 20s out there so again a very cold night tomorrow not so bad. Temperatures warming up into the upper 30s. We might even see a few areas in southern Siouxland crack into the low 40s with sunshine. So a nice rebound tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Marcus. And thank you for joining us. We hope you have a Merry Christmas. See you back here at 6.